Welcome back, MMA Oddsbreaker. Today, Sergio Pettis getting ready to fight Matt Hobart. Come here, UFC 181, December 6th. Um, you look good. You're smiling. Uh, but you yeah. always look this good. You were a couple weeks out right now, but you always look this good beforehand. I mean, it's kind of par for the course for you. Has anything special happened in this training camp? Uh, I mean, I, I just feel a lot more mature this training camp, man. You know, I, I've, I've took uh, my career and put it in my control now. Before, I would just train mindlessly. I've uh, been working a lot of details, you know, uh, a lot more uh, game planning and uh, understanding the sport. And, you know, if it goes three, three to three rounds that I know how to win them decision. And I, I'm also trying to trying to work with that finish, man. Like, I've, I've fought three times in the UFC without getting a finish. So, you know, that's something I'm really pushing for this next fight and also all next year. I don't understand. You said you're just training mindlessly. What, is, what does that mean? You know, I would just go to the gym and I would just not really have a purpose there. I would just be training, not working on what my opponent's uh, good at. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't watch videos, wouldn't watch tape. So I feel this this time around, I'm, I'm trying to do it right and I'm trying to, you know, actually pay attention to what my opponent does and um, work work on their weaknesses. So this being the first time that you've actually looked at tape, has have you had somebody help you look at the tape and kind of analyze what to look for, or do you just figure it out on your own? Yeah, I mean, I watch videos with Duke. We, uh, you know, just try to break him down, um, try to try to see what they're weak at. And, you know, he's a southpaw, so it's going to be a little bit different, hitting different angles. So I've been really applying uh, some of that video into my camp and just trying to trying to work those angles. I used to be a big tape watcher, but I, I really didn't understand how to watch tape until I actually got lucky. I had Randy Couture sit me down and go, look, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for not only for strength and weaknesses, but you're looking for tells, you're looking for position changes. You know, everyone's got a habit of, you know, just before they throw a big left hand, they start, you know, whatever their tell is before they throw that big left. Like, they're going to wave that right hand around or whatever. He, like, he taught me how to look for that stuff. So I got lucky because I got educated. But I used to watch yeah, a lot yeah. of tape without the education. What's it like sitting there with Duke? Sometimes you kind of like, Duke, I don't know what you're seeing. Like, if you're looking at something, I don't know what you're looking at. Show it to me because he's so good at that kind of stuff that it's kind of, over your head sometimes? you feel like it's, he's kind of out over your head a little bit sometimes with his analysis? Yeah, for sure, for sure. When he would tell me earlier in my camps about watching videos, you know, I, like I said, I would watch I would watch him, but I wouldn't really pay attention. You know, I would, I would look at it as entertainment more than uh, educational purpose. And uh, sitting down with him and working on that, just seeing that, uh, you know, like they're, like you said, like the little details, the little habits they do before they throw a big bomb, before they do a takedown. And, uh, you know, he, he helps me point that out. Sometimes I don't see it, you know, because uh, Duke, Duke's really good at it. He's been around for a while, so I'm slowly getting better at it. It's tough. It's it's really like going back to school again, watching tape, because especially with a guy like Duke, Duke Rufus, he he is, we say he's been around for a while. He's one of the best guys. And he was one of the best guys when he was competing. And then one of the best guys for technical training and getting guys ready for the next fights right after, because he, he was so good at looking. And we're talking... You probably don't remember, but back then they had Betamax and VHS tapes. Like he was looking at yeah, those yeah. tapes where it wasn't digital. You could slide back a little bit. You have to stop and rewind and stop and rewind and, and keep pushing yep. buttons. And he, he developed it on that kind of game. So good good for you. Props to you to, to develop yourself as a fighter and trying to be better. So you said you're going for finishes. You want to try and finish. How do you see yourself finishing Matt Hobart? That's your next opponent. How do you, how do you see yourself finishing this fight? I mean, I see myself finish it in the stand-up game. You know, I feel I'm more I'm more technical than him, and uh, I just gotta let loose when I go in there, man. You know, these first, the first three fights I had, um, I was I was pretty tight, and I, I started loosening up. Uh, my last fight with Yeltsin Meza, I started finding my groove uh, a little bit later, but uh, you know, I feel that's gonna continue on to my next fight, and I'll just go out there and perform, and you know, do do what I know to do. I train to do every day. You know, I'm and that's just of, be loose. I'm one of the biggest guys here when it comes to this. Like, you, you're not. Anthony Pettis' little brother, you're Sergio Pettis. You're two different people. Yeah. You're two different. You fight, fight your own game. But you were walking into a situation where your brother was already, you know, Tyler's a champ. He already beat Benson Henderson. He was this big, big name as you're coming in. Did some of that wear on you in the beginning, the first couple of fights? Was it kind of like, wasn't only the pressure to the UFC, but also the pressure of like, hey, you're trying to, look, I'm my own man over here. I'm not, I'm not his little brother. I'm a, I'm a man too. Like, was you have a, was part of that too, part of the reason why you were so tight? First yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I mean, my first fight in the UFC, you know, they gave me a little bit more uh, coverage than most people. Um, you know, they, Anthony Pettis' little brother, they uh, had cameras following me around. And, uh, you know, I, I would I would go on the internet and read the stuff that people are saying, oh, you know, he's, he's a little brother. He's not going to be as good. And that stuff would play into my head. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I learned to not l l look at it and, you know, look at it in my view. You know, I'm my own fighter and my career is, I, I'm slow. I'm slowly, you know, starting. I'm only 21 years old. I got plenty of time to get to where he's at. And 
you know, I, it's just a matter of time before I get there. And it's just it's a matter of me evolving in the sport and maturing into the sport as well. I do like your mindset. I do like the fact that you are still developing not only as, as an athlete, but you're also developing a, as a man, too, because you're going, look, I got to watch tape and figure stuff out. I can't just keep doing what I'm doing and hoping it's going to ride. And that's smart. At 21 years old, I'm like, you know, next wrestling tournament, where's the next girl at? You know, like I didn't really think about any of this stuff. I'm like trying to analyze stuff and try to break stuff down. So it's a real mature mindset to have. And it's got to be tough trying to break out from underneath your, your brothers. It's got, always got to be that, that tough situation. But believe me, it's going to stop when, when you're the champ. It's going to be like, oh, okay, this is the Pettis is what they do. The family yeah. does that now. And it's always going to be equated. But you have him as a training partner. And, and he corners you most of the time. And you corner him and you're always around for each other. You guys are always in the same space. Uh, doesn't that help as well, dealing with all that, dealing all that stuff too? Is because you're always around each other. And he, you kind of feed off him and he feeds off you as well. Yeah, man, we keep it positive. You know, we read the stuff, you know, and now that, you know, we're both in the UFC, you know, we read to laugh about it. You know, it's funny what people are saying, but uh, it's great to have Anthony in my camp, man. He he does a lot for me. He, you know, he uh, he teaches me the way, man. He he pretty much paved the way for me, and I just got to follow his, the way he did it. I got to follow it and do it my own way and, uh, you know, just try to try to be where he's at, man. He's at a high level, and he's, he's finishing these guys. He's entertaining, and uh, that's what I want to be, too. So I'm, I'm training like him, and I'm... No, this fight camp's awesome to be in the same car together for the first time right. that since was like, yeah, that was I was like 15 year. years old. Yeah, man. 15 years old, the first time we were on the same car together. So it's been six years. Yeah, so this is going to be a great experience for both of us. So how's it going to work? Because obviously he's later tonight. He's a co-main event. He's, he's fighting Gilbert Melendez later on the night with Robbie Lawler and Johnny Hendricks being the main event. You're early in the card. And I always look at it like, where, where's your ranking within the card system? Like the obviously the more name, name guys are at the end. The, the un, not so named guys are early in the card. That's how it goes. You're third yeah. Friday of the night, and I was and I kind of looked at it. I was like, oh, that's a little bit low. Like, why is he so far down the the card? But it makes sense too to keep the two pedestals apart from each other. So they're putting yeah. you a little bit earlier in the card, and obviously him. He asked me since the co main event, make you early, but I want to make you so but put you down at the beginning. That, you know, the, you know, one or two is kind of silly, but third is the is the perfect spot for your fight to kind of break out and, and be on its own. You know, separate from from the rest of the main card. And kind of have your own start to, to how things are going. But Anthony obviously won't be in your corner this time. He'll be, he'll be in the locker room with you, obviously. I'm assuming you guys be in the same locker room. But he's not going to be in your corner. And it's going to be tough for you to get out there and corner him. You guys are really there for each other all the time. But this fight, like you said, is the first time in six years you guys have been on the same fight card. How is it going to be different actually walking down to, to the arena? Walking to make that long walk when Burt Watson goes, we're rolling, baby. And obviously you can still make that walk. What's going to be different this time than the other three times? That you fought in the UFC? Um, I mean, it's not going to be much different, man. I've had Anthony not in my corner a couple of times, so I know how to deal with it. Um, you know, we're both there for a purpose. We're both trying to trying to end these fights quick, trying to get out and enjoy our lives. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's awesome that we're going to be together. You know, we're going to have that positive energy in the room. And when Anthony's in his uh, warm-up room, man, he, he looks like Michael Jordan. So, you know, just, just knowing that I get to see that after I perform is going to be awesome, too. What's the one thing that Anthony told you when he told it to you? Like, even could have been years ago. You're like, man, that's just stupid. I'm not listening to that. And all of a sudden, the first time it actually happened to you, whether it was a technique, you know, opponent striking you or, or a media person asking a weird question or whatever, anything within the fight game, that all of a sudden when he, that, that situation finally came up, you're like, oh, this is what he means. Okay, I get it. I understand now. Yeah, mostly the mentality aspect of it, man. You know, I, I didn't think that played a big role into it. Yeah. Uh, my fight with Bruce Leroy, you know, I, honestly, I, I could have defended that choke. I could have, uh, you know, got out of that, and I, I gave up on myself. And I understand that, you know, and it's it's the mentality. You know, you got to go in there with a positive mindset and a mindset to, to perform to what you want to do. If you want to finish this fight, you got to go in there with the mindset that you're going to finish or the mindset that you're going to win this fight no matter what. And um, you know, I went in that fight. I, I, I had a good time. I was having a great time. Yeah. I got deep in the rounds, and uh, I gave up on myself, and I ended up submitting. So, you know, that's that's something I learned from that. And, you know, the first loss, you also said that, you know, that's going to make you train harder. And yeah. that made me want the sport a lot more. And you can see the difference between Alex and, and uh, Meza when you came out for that, that next fight. It was a totally different, not, you want to say a totally different person. You didn't, like, all of a sudden change from being a great striker to all of a sudden being a ground guy and boot scooting. But you changed as a fighter. And you could see it. And the people that, that pay attention to fights could see that you were different when you, in the, within the first 45 seconds of that fight. Uh, that you came out harder and, and were, were a little bit more... Um, a little more confident, but you're right. You said earlier in this interview that, that it waited. You know, you finally felt comfortable later in the round. You could see how you started to accelerate. Part of that was because you were in so much better shape than he was. Like you just seemed like you had a, bar, a higher rate, a higher punch pattern. 
Do you feel that as well? That when you were fighting, all of a sudden, you started fading a little bit because you just felt like you're still in better shape. And you could push the pace harder. Yeah, I felt like Meza when he, when he couldn't take me down is when he started going downhill. When when his game plan went out the window, he couldn't take me down. Uh, you could see it in his mood that he wasn't you know gonna win that fight, and that's like that's like the mindset we we're just talking about earlier, man. If he didn't have the mindset to beat me, and then uh, you know that that shows the outcome of the fight. So yeah, man. Um, I felt like I was faster than him, better cardio. Uh, just kept my distance. He was a little bit taller than me, but I, I kept the distance, so it was it was pretty cool. Sergio Pettis getting ready to fight Matt Hobar. He's predicting, well, he does not predicting, but he's stating that he's going to finish this fight. Uh, that's what he's trying to do for the rest of uh, 2014 or 2015 is get finishes. I got to be honest with you, I, Matt's a tough opponent, and he's a, he's a very game guy. It's going to be a great fight because both of you guys are really going to bring it. And the only way, you know, the way that I picked for you to finish the fight was for you to beat him in a stand-up. And that, that's what yeah. I said. I said, you know, Sergio's going to, there's a problem. If there's any way that Matt's going to lose, it's going to be in a stand-up. Sergio's better, faster. Stronger in that position, have better better takedown defense in that spot, and also you cut the angles a lot more. Yeah. Have you been working a lot more on your footwork and, and knowing that hey, that's my strong suit, so I need to keep training on that as well? Or are you spend yeah. a lot more time working on stuff that you're like, okay, here's my weakness. Let me work on my weakness a lot more. I've been working. I mean, a lot of my footwork. You know, just just staying away from the takedown for this fight, especially. Yeah. He's gonna try to get me on the cage. He's gonna try to take me down and grind me out. Um, he's probably going to go for some submissions, knowing that I lost to Alex Caceres by submission. So, um, you know, he's, he's going to try to get it to the floor, and I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure he doesn't. But working a lot of takedown defense and uh, a lot of footwork, you know, just being a lot faster. This guy's not going to be able to catch up to me, man. You, know, you talked about uh, keep, you playing the distance. He's 5'10". He's, he's a full four or five inches taller than you. Uh, at your 5'6". Um, he's very tall for weight class. You know, 135 pounds being 5'10". It's my height for 135 pounds. It's very tall. 135 pounder, but now you're looking at a guy that's a wrestler. You obviously going to keep the distance better because you're more. That's your striking game is to keep a longer range. Is is without giving up too much away because I know you want to kind of keep your, your game plan secret. It, it, is part of your part of your training had been you know use long range and punches, keep at a distance, keep them away from you. Yeah, yeah, it would be not so much that just not over committing on punches. You know, his, his last fight he fought um, what was his name? Um, uh, Aaron Phillips, I believe. Phillips, yep. Yeah. And Eric Phillips, you know, he, he overcommitted on most of his punches, and that's when the takedown was there. So I'm working on, you know, just not, not overcommitting, hitting them different angles, and, uh, you know, just reacting to what he does. That, uh, I hate to say it, but uh, that's typical Duke Rufus style. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> For that's sure. Duke yeah. style. He's like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to hit you with 100 kicks. I'm going to hit you with 57 back sp spinning fists. I'm going to hit you with a couple of combos. And then eventually I'm going to see that opening, and then I'm going to start to crack you once I feel the opening. But I'm yep. never going to overcommit. That is 100% Duke Rufus style. And, and what a great way to, to have it come back again is, is, in, is in you. That's, a, that's a, a perfect style for you and your body type at the weight class. And it makes, just makes so much sense for how you strike. You're kind of following that mindset. And just I'm not pitter-pattering, but I'm picking my shot. And then when I see the big one, now I'm going to hit you with a big hard three-punch combo and finish off with a kick and the fight's over. Yeah, exactly, man. He said it all. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh -huh. I like it when I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> Sergio, thanks for spending some time up with us on here. I appreciate it. Good luck. Uh, it's going to be a great fight. Hopefully, I'll be in town for this one. Obviously, it's here in Las Vegas. Uh, it's in my hometown. For those of you that can't be in Vegas to watch them live like I'm trying to be, then you can obviously watch all the fights on uh, on uh, Fox Sports, the early fights, and on to the pay-per-view for UFC 181. Thanks, Sergio. I appreciate it, bud. We'll talk to you soon, man. Have fun. Yeah, I'll see you soon, man. Thank you.